again, everybody from Spartanburg. Welcome to the Coach Josh Conklin Show, brought to you by Duck Donuts. I'm Jim Noble. And Coach found an interesting statistic as we were getting ready for this show. Wapert has played the fourth toughest schedule in FCS football, opposing teams 38 and 16 this season. I know you guys don't buy into excuses or things like that, but one of those teams, Mercer, your opponent last Saturday, you ran into another team that seems to be hitting on all cylinders, and it just was not Wofford's night. No, uh, you know, and I and I, I think as a as a program and as a coaching staff, I mean, we we never sit here ever will we ever sit here and make excuses uh, in terms of what's going on or what's happening. But um, there are some very there's some very real things you know that are taking place right now uh, mm -hmm. within our program that um, you know we're growing from and, and we're growing through. Uh, I think anytime you go through change, uh, when you start to change your offense, um, change your defense with a new coordinator last spring, mm -hmm. um, and, and kind of modifying some things, there's a, there's a growth that goes into that. Um, the results aren't what anybody wants right now. We understand mm -hmm. that, but uh, we also understand that uh, to get to where we want to go, there's going to be some growth and there's going to be some pain that goes with that. Um, but I don't have any doubt in my mind that we're going to get there. Well, during the course of the next 30 minutes or so, we will take a look back at the Mercer game. We'll look ahead to the next opponent, Western Carolina, and we'll get into some of the issues the coach is talking about in terms of where the program is now, where the program is headed, and trying to implement some of the new personnel and the changes that coach has talked about over the last few months. It's all ahead. Keep it right here on the Coach Josh Conklin Show. And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show. Coach, take us back to last spring. You were decimated by injuries. Uh, the COVID-19 situation hit everybody hard. Over the course of the summer, you added 40 new players to this roster, which is a great thing in terms of depth, but trying to train everybody into the way that you do things here and get them ready to hit the field, that's a whole nother story sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, no, it really is. It does take some time. It takes some effort. Um, you know, I think there's there's a few things that happened over the course of this past spring and this past summer. Um, number one is adding 42 players, which is a lot of new guys. Uh, we added a coordinator and a defensive line coach last spring, and they didn't really have a spring ball. They just kind of went into a spring season, which was good. Um, we lost our offensive coordinator this summer. Um, and so you add a new offensive coordinator or two new offensive coordinators. Um, guys that are sharing those responsibilities and a quarterback's coach. So you, that in combination of now kind of what we're seeing right now is like on defense, I think we've got maybe six, seven guys that were starters that are no longer playing because of injury. Um, so we got the depth. Mm -hmm. we, we were able to add depth to the field and, and we've got players that can play, um, but they're young. And so they're going to make young mistakes um, on defense. And then offensively, you know, we're trying to do some different things and trying to continue to modify and advance the offense. And, you know, Jim, that was the vision that I got hired mm -hmm. um, to put into place. And that's the vision we're trying to instill. We did win two conference championships here, back to back. Um, I won those as a head football coach. Mm -hmm. So we know what we're doing, we understand what we're doing. There's some factors that are outside of our control right now. And there's some factors that are within our control that we've got to own, own and we do own as a coaching staff. And We've got to get better. We understand that, um, but it's going. We're going to get there. We just got to stay the course and just never quit. Back to the coaches for a second. I mean, for an FCS staff to lose two coaches to the National Football League, 
That doesn't happen all the time. That's a testament to the quality of the coaches, but also uh, the way that they've developed as coaches underneath your head coaching tutelage. So not only were you replacing one coordinator, then a second coordinator, but a lot of new coaches are in pretty important roles. And then you throw the whole spring football. Some of these coaches came in a week before your first spring game. So you're developing players. Are you also developing coaches at the, at the same time? Yeah, you're developing them and trying to get them to understand kind of where, you know, how we work, how we operate. Um, it's a very unique place in terms of the academics, the scheduling, the logistics. Um, so all that is, is kind of a, a brand new process. And then they're getting acquainted with their with their players, guys that they didn't recruit. Um, and again, all this is not, I want to make sure it's not an excuse, it's just these are real things that you deal with. Uh, we're not into quick fixes here. I know people want to snap their fingers and, and get it right now. Um, that's not the profession that I'm in. And, um, you know, we, we're going to try to get it done as quickly as we can. Um, we just haven't got there yet. All right, when we come back, we'll look at the field. We'll take it back to Mercer Saturday night, look ahead to Western Carolina, and see what's going to transpire over the course of the next seven days here at Wofford. It's coming up next. Keep it right here on the Coach Josh Coughlin Show. Sure can. Football season, the best time of year, no question. Welcome back. I've noticed, Coach, that every team that Wofford has played over the last month or so has had some sort of edge on you. Furman and Sanford both were coming off by weeks before they played the Terriers. The Mercer Bears got embarrassed a week ago at home against VMI. They came in with a mental edge. You could tell that, that, that they had, you know, had some come to Jesus meetings for lack of a better term with coach chronic uh, and you showed up Saturday at six o'clock at five star stadium and, and faced a team that was absolutely ready to play it. I know you gave them full credit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, we did. I mean, they, they, they came out, uh, they were ready to go. And all honestly, I thought we, we came out, we were ready to go uh, as well. Um, defensively, you know, we fought hard for that first half. Uh, we had a scoop and score. Uh, mm -hmm. We got a huge turnover in the red zone and then we ended up turning it over. Um, you know, with the ball uh, being a, a touchdown um, on a turnover. So uh, we fought and we clawed um, and we just we ran out of gas in the second half. Uh, we couldn't get anything going offensively, um, which, you know, we own that as a coaching staff. We've got to do a better job uh, offensively and getting the ball moved and getting first downs, and getting points on the board. Uh, when you don't do that and you face a team that comes in with something to prove, mm -hmm. um, you can run into a buzzsaw. Also had a freshman quarterback, Bryce Corriston, making his first collegiate start. Let's take you to the highlights from Mercer. Wofford, first and 10 from the 25. Corriston's in the shotgun. And he is going to roll out to right. The ball is loose. Mercer's on the football. The question is, it's an incomplete pass. And Van, I was looking right into the sun, intended for RJ Kale. Couldn't see exactly what happened, but uh, Wofford dodges an early bullet. Third and 10, Corson back to pass again. Throws it out to the flat, KO can't handle that. Perfect pass is incomplete and three straight incompletions and Wofford has to punt, not exactly what they're looking for. He's to the left of Fred Payton, the quarterback, who's back to throw again, looking to his right. Now he's got to get flushed out. The rush can't get there. Woolery had a shot at him and now Payton will run and get the first out and more all the way down to about the 30 yard line. All right, welcome back, and Mercer has just scored. Got out of the commercial a little bit late, and Mercer has scored on a 26-yard touchdown strike. Fred Payton hit the receiver in the corner, and very, very quickly, it is six to nothing. So well, let's see how he does next time. Craig, the tight end, goes to the left side of the formation on second down and nine. 
Corriston is going to option left. He will keep it. Bryce Corriston goes up for about two, maybe three. Three wide receivers to the near side of the formation as Corriston goes back to pass on third down. He's flushed out, runs up. He's got a seam, and he will take a hit Great and move. get the first down. Big, big rush by Corriston out to the 37-yard line. Takes the snap, drops straight back. Pulls the ball down. He's going to try to run for it again. And this time, the Wofford quarterback is going to be short. And Bryce Corson took a big, big hit. Went down on his right shoulder. Hope he's okay. It'll bring up fourth at about two. Hey, look at seven. He's coming back. See some south of the field calling out some signals as Peyton. He hands off. And it's a sweep. Oh, what a play on the corner. Swooping in and making the hit is John Michael DiRoberto. Man in motion. Back to pass is Peyton. Plenty of time. He's going to go long down the middle of the field, and that is going to be complete. Long gain inside the 10-yard line of the Terriers. He hooked up with Ty James. Goal from the eight. Man in motion. Davis gets the carry, and he is going to waltz into the end zone. From eight yards out, Fred Davis with the rushing touchdown, and Mercer is blitzing Wofford right now. It's 13-0. Corson fakes the end around, keeps it himself, gets some room off the left side, slicing over the 30-yard line. Good gain of about 10. He'll still be two yards short of the first down, but that's the burst. Corson. Checking the defense, takes the shotgun, throws a quick pass out to the right. It's complete to Matthews. Can he bowl ahead for the first down? He can. Short pass to the right flat. Devin Matthews did the next. The transfer from Navy gets the course and showing some spark. Complete out to the right flat. Wrestled out of bounds is Jim Welch. That'll be a gain of about 10 and gold helmet. First and 10 Terriers. Ball up to Mercer 41. Mulligan gets it. Trying to get outside. He's got some room. 30. 25-20, Irvin Mulligan down in the red zone inside the 15-yard line. Defense a little bit for Mercer. First and 10, Wofford from the 13. Corson throws to the right side. It's complete to Holt. Alec Holt may try to make a man miss. He does. He's into the end zone. Touchdown, Terriers. Alec Holt gets the pass from 13 Number yards 11, out. Alec Holt Young, but big offensive lineman. This time Peyton rolls to his left, looking to throw. Now he'll throw across the grain, and it's complete. First down out to the 45-yard line. He Fred hooked Payton's up with Parker Robo once again. They make it. And John Michael DiRoberto has looked darn good tonight, too. Peyton in the shotgun. Davis, the two Freds in the backfield for Mercer on third and nine. Drops back. Pressure coming. Loses the football. Loses the football. It's bouncing. Oh, Wofford oh. has it. Running. Nobody near him. It's Joe Beckett, and it's going to be a Wofford touchdown. How about that? That's what you call a momentum changer. Peyton went to throw the football. It slipped out of his hand. He dove for it to recover it, couldn't, and it bounced right up for Beckett, who plucked it out of the air and rumbled for the touchdown. <laughs> Third and ten, Peyton back to pass. This time he's got some time. Throws it over the middle, but broke it up. Big, big hit. I think that was Camden Gray who made the stop. Camden Gray getting the start in place of Brand the injured Brandon Brown. It was. It was Camden Gray, but that was a massive hit. Horson looking to throw. He'll throw it out to the flat, and it's incomplete. Just off the outstretched hand of Jim Welsh, the incomplete pass will bring up fourth and 16. And one and one here. Interesting call here. Straight ahead to Davis. He's got the first down and a lot more. He'll get into the 22, about the 20-yard line. Peyton back to throw. He's going to throw deep in the end zone and overshot his man in the back of the end zone. Incomplete. That was Ty James. This time it's a keeper for Peyton. He'll be hit at the six. Falls forward to the five. Ball is loose. Ball is loose. I think the Terriers have got it. Wofford says they have it. They're pointing the other direction. No signal yet. Wofford football. The Terriers already punted once from their own goal line in this quarter, don't want to do it again. As, oh, the ball is loose. Corston oh, kicks it into the end zone. Loose ball. Mercer says they have it, and it's a Mercer touchdown. Oh, oh my word. Here, we'll have a better time than we are right now. Mercer up by seven. 
with the ball third and six from the 12, and Peyton's back to pass. Lofts it to the left corner of the end zone, and it's broken up. Good defense by Wofford's Donovan Anderson, and it'll bring up fourth down. They were looking for Harper in the corner yet again. Out of the hold of Dylan Fromm. Snap is good. Kick is up sky high, and it is good. So with a minute 31 to go, Mer Mercer stretches the lead. They'll give it to James, excuse me, Davis. Joe Beckett makes the hit after just a yard. Good in the spring at Gibbs. Oh, Davis does it again, makes two men miss. 13, 14 yards into the red another. zone. I think that's a, a little generous. He gets down really low, runs behind his pads really well. Now Peyton is back to throw, looking wow. to the end zone, wide open touchdown. Brandon Marshall came Brandon out of the backfield and eight. nobody Brandon covered Marshall. him in the back of the end zone. He'll do it again, Ingram. Breaks a couple more. Ryan Ingram showing some strength as he gets it across the 20. Down to about the 22. Give him seven more. Is out of the way. Second down. Feeding Ingram once again. And once again, more yards. Ingram out across the 30 to the 32. Peyton will keep. Drug down a shoestring tackle by Harrison Barnes. He Keeping wasn't letting go either. Let me yeah. take it. He was not letting go. Harrison Morgan, excuse me. Tackle by number four. 24. Peyton is back to pass. Looking long. Lofts it into the corner of the end zone for another Mercer touchdown. Here in the fourth quarter. Peyton almost ran into Wooten, handing it off. And that kind of threw the timing of the playoff. Number 29. Michael Mason. 49. Another quick hitter and plenty of room for Wooten. 30, 20, 10, Wooten, we touchdown missed Mercer, missed tackles all over the place by the Whopper defense, and up the middle, short of the first down, Marshall is again, but it really Number doesn't matter, eight, Brandon Marshall on the carry. as the clock up. continues to tick, now under Bears. 10 seconds to play, no need for the Bears to run another play, and that is Marcus going Gatling. to do it here in Macon, your final score, Mercer 45, Wofford 14. So it was a tough loss, 45 to 14, no doubt about that. Bryce Corriston, obviously that's a tough assignment. Uh, the offense was, you know, a, a little disjointed, came back, but um, the, the inability to move the ball and let you play, as you call it, complimentary football, that was certainly an issue on Saturday. Yeah, no, it was. I mean, we, we have to play complimentary football. We got to be able to control the line of scrimmage, which we did not do. We got to be able to get first downs. And we got to be able to score points. Um, seven points is never going to be enough. And so, you know, those are issues that, again, that, that we've got to own as a coaching staff. We got to own as players. Um, and we got to get into um, how do we fix those things and, and how do we improve? Um, I want to see improvement mm -hmm. on that side of the ball these next four weeks. I want to see us start to operate how we have the vision of what it should look like, and, and we haven't got there yet, to be quite frank. Philosophically, you made the comment earlier in the year, you have burned the boats. We're, we're not going back to the pure triple option. You've recruited going in this direction. You've implemented schemes going in this direction, but it is a process, and I imagine not an overnight process, despite the fact that's what fans want to see. Yeah, no, it isn't. And I, I think, you know, one of the one of the things that uh, I think sometimes gets overlooked when you come out of a, a triple option option system that, that Wade Lang ran mm -hmm. um, here for 30 years, everything was predicated on the quarterback and mm -hmm. what his reads and keys were in the run game. Um, and to be honest, the, the, the throw game was an afterthought. Um, if you threw it 10 times a game, that was that was a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're going to expand the pass game and throw the ball like we want to, then now the quarterback has got to be able to not only see the, the, the front and, and read that, but he's also got to be able to read coverages and progressions mm -hmm. in the throw game. That takes time. And one of the things that we've tried to do is we've tried to simplify our run game up front so he doesn't have as much to think about mm -hmm. um, because he's got to think more about, am I reading an uh, inside linebacker, an outside linebacker, a safety? Uh, so those are, the, those are the, the growing pains that I'm talking about in terms of how we grow the offense. Um, now, whether you agree with that or disagree with that, that's the vision that I have for the program. Mm -hmm. I want to run the football and I want to control the line of scrimmage. Uh, we're just going to go about doing it in a little bit different way 
and that's what we want to do. Do you also have to kind of retrain some of the older players, the upperclassmen, in terms of not just you know reads and mental stuff? Is there a physical difference? Do you need different body types out there at certain positions? Is that something that obviously can't happen overnight as well? It is a little bit. I think one thing that you have to do, you know, with your, with your skill players, your wide receivers, we're asking more of those guys. So mm -hmm. that's a, you know, that that takes some growth. Um, but probably mo the most the most important guy is the quarterback, and, and what you're asking that guy to do, and and at, what he has to do on a snap by snap day by day, read by read, um, is a lot more, and there's a lot on him. Um, and it takes some time to, to develop that. Mm -hmm. Well, when we come back, hopefully we'll see some of the fruits of this labor next week because Western Carolina is coming to town. Catamount feeling pretty good about themselves. We'll discuss that matchup coming up next. Sure can. Football season, the best time of year, no question. And welcome back to the Coach Josh Conklin Show. I'm Jim Noble. So Western Carolina coming to Gibbs Stadium on Saturday. Kerwin Bell, the new coach there, just got their first win at the Citadel last week. And we talk about a team coming in with an edge, and it happens once again because sometimes you need to get that first win to believe in yourselves and. The Catamounts probably do heading into this matchup. Yeah, no, they're a they're a, they're a good team. Um, they're well coached. They play really hard. They've got a good offensive system. They've got a really good defensive system. So um, it's going to be a good matchup. It's going to take everything we got uh, to be competitive, and um, we are looking forward to it. I know the guys are excited to get back out there and get going again and, and get a chance to you know to, to be here. How do you prepare for a team that has a new coach and has kind of cleaned house in terms of their schemes and things like that? Do you go back to his previous coaching stints at other schools? Do you look at tape from them? Is, is it difficult when you don't have a lot of current tape to go by? Uh, yeah, it is. Now, we've got uh, quite a bit from this season on them, but we did in the summertime. We all we go through all our con conference opponents and we try to do a summer scout, self-scout, mm -hmm. um, but a summer scout on our opponents. And we went back and watched, you know, where Kerwin had been, where his son had been. Um, we, we got all that stuff and, you know, kind of gave us an idea as far as what they're going to do schematically. Now that changes, obviously, when you look at their personnel and, and how they're going to approach it um, based on who they have and their schemes and how that they've kind of evolved over the year, which sure. all teams do. So uh, we feel like we've got a pretty good handle now on, on what they're trying to get done. A lot will be asked of our defense. You have talked about the defense and, you know, how this has evolved. It came into the season as a position of strength. We only lost one starter on paper, but boy, injuries have hit that side of the football hard. I think you've lost six starters now on defense. You're playing a lot of guys who are essentially playing their first season of college football. And I think on that side of the football, there is a big difference for being a high school stud on defense where you could probably physically overpower a lot of your opponents and being thrown into the mix in Division One college football and be expected to make plays. As a defensive guy, how do you, how do you build that skill set up from somebody who might only be 18 years old at this point? Well, you, you, the, the, whole, the key is you, you try to give them, you, you try not to give them too much. You're mm -hmm. trying to give them what they need um, for the 80% the of what they're going to see. Uh, the thing that I thought Mercer did a really good job of on Saturday is they gave us 20 to 20 percent of the stuff you don't see, and they executed it at a really high level. Mm -hmm. And what it does is it puts your puts linebackers, it puts defensive backs in conflict in terms of their rule. Older guys sometimes can get themselves out of that situation because they've seen it before and they know how to respond to it. Um, and yeah, I was really proud of our guys because we saw a couple things, and then the next play or the next time we saw it, we'd gotten it corrected, which you don't always see from young guys. So. 
again, when I say that I'm encouraged and there's a lot of good things that are going on, those are the things that you see as a coach in the meeting room mm -hmm. that you don't see on game day when it just happens uh, quickly. You know, we go back and look at tape, and it, it seems very often this year you've had some people scheme-wise in the right positions. And sometimes, whether it's one-on-one -on -one tackling, you know, just just basic fundamentals of, of blocking and tackling, that's where sometimes we're, we're getting beat. Do you have to go back to the drawing board sometimes and just say, hey, we're just going to go out there and do fundamental basic football blocking and tackling drills and hopefully with that base then you move on to the things that an older player learns and knows you do you do and i you know i i know some people have, have spoke about or talked about like the missed tackles i know we see a lot of missed tackles um, way too many mm -hmm. um that and it's it's not not acceptable sometimes those missed tackles are uh, to be honest with you, they're a young guy that doesn't understand the speed at which a yes. running back's going to cut <laughs> or a speed at which a wide receiver is going to make a break um, that comes with experience, as you know, and uh, th they're growing fast, which is which is good to see. And again, I can't say enough about our players, Jim. Our, our players are they're they're incredible people. They're playing their tails off. They're working really hard. Um, what they lack in experience right now at some positions, they make up for it for their want to. So I, again, I I'm having a lot of fun coaching that group, those, this group. And you've often spoken about the high ceiling that you see for a lot of these guys. We may not see it this year um, or maybe more towards the end of the year. In closing, what do you want Wofford fans, alumni, the people who are very passionate about this school and this football team, what do you want them to know um, about the character of the men, not only wearing the uniform, but your coaches, your support staff, what do you want them to know that maybe they don't see looking in from the outside? The biggest thing that I, I think people have got to understand is we haven't changed philosophically in terms of who we are, in terms of our character. Uh, we are who the alumni were when they were here. Uh, we got great kids who love academics. They work really, really hard. Um, that's who we are at our core. What we've changed a little bit is what we're going to be doing on the field. Now, with that being said, that's the vision that we've all been charged with. And we will get there, but you got to be, you got to understand that through this adversity that we're going through right now, we are facing some adversity. We've never had a never, we, we've never had a, a quit mentality or, you know, pack it in mentality. We are, we are built on never quitting. We don't quit, we don't ever give up, and we see it through. And like I told the team uh, last, last Saturday before the game, there's gonna be players in this facility right now that see and experience some great, great things that maybe have never been done here before. Mm -hmm. We just haven't seen that yet um, on the football field. So when the critics wanna snap and the critics wanna um, get on us, I, I appreciate that because you want passionate fans. Sure. I appreciate the passionate fans. They should be upset. I'm upset uh, of the product right now. We're all upset at the product right now. But, and there's a, <laughs> there's a big but, don't quit. Don't quit on the kids. Don't quit on the stuff. Mm -hmm. We're, we're going to get this thing figured out. Sometimes it all just coalesces when you least expect it all at once. And who knows? Hopefully it'll be on this field this weekend when Western Carolina comes to town. The Terriers can use your support. We hope to see you out there. For, for Coach Josh Conklin, I'm Jim Noble. As always, thanks for watching The Coach Josh Conklin Show brought to you by Duck Donuts.